I first saw DBS surgery as a resident. You, you, you know, you always remember when you've seen your, your first deep brain stimulation surgery because it's um, pretty striking. Um, it's one of the few neurosurgical procedures, and maybe actually one of the only neurosurgical procedures where you see such an immediate uh, positive response. Parkinson's disease, or even benign essential tremor, these are pretty debilitating disorders that really significantly negatively impact someone's quality of life. And to be able to, in a relatively minimally invasive way, to be able to produce such a tremendous and consistent effect that, are, that improves quality of life, is you know, just an amazing thing that you know, really drew me to this therapy. Here at the University of Miami, um, we use what's called a multidisciplinary approach. It's a group of neurologists, neurosurgeons, psychiatrists, and neuropsychologists who discuss each and every case uh, to determine whether or not they're optimal for deep brain stimulation. And I think what this allows us to do is really get a broad perspective from different groups and different disciplines as to whether or not you're an optimal candidate for this therapy with the data we collect. And I think that that produces more consistent, more effective outcomes. Over the years, you know, and deep brain stimulation now has been around for many, many years, it's not experimental, it's an FDA approved procedure, um, and we know quite a bit about it now, um, it becomes clear that in patients who suffer with Parkinson's disease, usually at about three to five years into their disease, uh, the medication that's typically given becomes less effective. And not only less effective, but patients start to develop what we call motor complications of the therapy itself. So now you're at a point where your disease has progressed, the underlying symptoms of the disease itself becomes very debilitating, and then on top of that, the very therapy that you're taking to help those symptoms is producing additional problems. And it's really at that point that you sort of hit a dead end in my mind. There's really no way to move forward other than deep brain stimulation. This therapy will improve quality of life probably 100% of the time. And you know, when people tell you 100% of the time, you, you have concerns. But I'll tell you this, I've done in the last 10 years over 600 of these implants, and I have yet to have a single patient come back to me and ask that I remove the device or even that the device be turned off. I see patients that I did 10 years ago. I see patients that I did five years ago. And it's always striking to me that the improvement in quality of life and the improvement in the symptoms that they experienced five or 10 years ago are still there.